Good morning, Internet. Uh, this is EJ once again with another video for you guys. Uh, and this time it's a commented video. So yeah, uh, real quick before I go over a few things that um, I want to talk about concerning my channel uh, before I go do that. I want to go ahead and talk about the process of this particular artwork we're looking at just so that you know I can get this out of the way um, and talk about this artwork more in depth later on when <laughs> I have most of my announcements out of the way so but yes let's talk about this art first before I talk about announcements um, so this particular artwork is uh, for a daily sketch group prompt uh, I did it for uh, a prompt that I saw on conceptart.org, uh, the daily sketch group. That particular forum has daily prompts. <laughs> and so this is one of the daily prompts that uh, I did. And the prompt title was the bunny that never said no. So uh, here I am about to draw a bunny. A robotic bunny because that seems to be my style as of late um, but yeah um, but the art process uh, which is what I really want to talk about not so much as the subject matter um, right now you guys are taking a look at me making a bunch of noise essentially is what I call it uh, what you're seeing in uh, the screen right now is just me just laying down a bunch of shapes, a bunch of colors, uh, just to get a general background in. And so that's what happened like the past two minutes. Uh, and then right now, I'm about to start on the layer where the rabbit is going to be. Um, and I do that by, again, making a bunch of random noise. Um, I use the random mech brush that uh, became available in Krita 4. Point something, and I love this brush. I, I use this brush all the time. Um, but yeah, I use this brush to make some random shapes. I edited this brush so that it would also give me random hues, so that I would have like different colors and not just the plain color that I have. Um, as soon as I have. Uh, the general shape of the rabbit um, what I then did was um, I added a few multiply uh, brush strokes in and uh, I think a few color dodge uh, brush strokes in there too and then as soon as I have all of that set I went ahead and blended everything now as soon as I blended everything um, uh, the blended shapes kind of gives a general idea of what the look of the rabbit is going to be. Um, so what I did was I essentially ended up grabbing my regular flow opacity brush and just uh, started making an outline of how the bunny was going to look. And so that's what I did. Yeah. I created a quick outline and then I used the eraser to define the rabbit more. And after I have done the outline and defined the shape some more, I went ahead and blended it again. And then after that last blending, I started the detailing process, which the detailing process is just pretty much me defining the edges, adding highlights, and pretty much accepting the shadows. So for the rest of the video, that's pretty much the general workflow that you will see me go through. And, um, Obviously, I will go more in depth about these steps later on um, when I am done talking about other stuff I want to talk about. Um, but yeah, so that's my general workflow essentially when I do my speed paints and, and when I do my regular uh, full render illustrations. So, but the part that I really wanted to talk about is uh, the obviously the what's new in my channel 
which is the commented videos. Originally when I started the channel, I really just wanted my channel to be just time lapses. I originally just, you know, wanted to record me doing my artwork. And then as soon as I'm done recording my artwork, just put it up in time lapse videos for people to enjoy and watch. Now I'm a visual artist. It's easy for me to learn just from time lapse videos. I don't necessarily need the step by step instruction, you know, and whatnot. I mean, I could kind of gather like how things are done just by looking at it, you know. Um, and a lot of my favorite artists uh, put out time lapse videos and they just do time lapse videos. They don't do any commentaries at all. Um, again, I've mentioned this earlier in one of my commented videos, Peter Polak. Uh, after his graphics this is his channel really amazing artist i learned a lot just by watching his time lapse and none of his videos have any commentaries in it and i learned from it um but the point i'm trying to make is that some people don't learn like that some people need the auditory component to have things click in their head and so now that i found myself with some available free time i decided you know what i will do some commented videos uh for some of my videos. Uh, I'm not sure how, uh, if I'm going to do commented videos every single time, because the thing with doing commented videos every single time is that it takes a lot of time to prep this versus just editing the video and then just putting it up. So, um, so yeah, uh, since I have some available time, I will do some commented videos. Um, and hopefully I still get some time in the future to just keep doing this because, you know, again, like I said, some people learn better if there's the auditory component, which is kind of what I'm trying to experiment with with this video. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so this is totally brand new in my channel. Me speaking. Yay, me speaking. Wow. So that's what I sound like. Um, so not only am I doing this new video with commentary on it, I also edited some of the videos I have put up already and added commentaries on it. So as of this moment, I have five videos that have commentaries on it. Um, Apocalyptic Centaur, my two minute warm up video, my robot cat sketch, Valley of the Rules, and this uh, new video, The Bunny Who Can Never Say No. Um, so yeah, if you want, if you want to hear me talk and chat about art and mispronounce the word Kyoskuro, Charoskuro, see I'm mispronouncing it already. I made fun of myself for mispronouncing that word in one of my videos and I was hoping to be able to pronounce it right in this video and go figure I'm still mispronouncing it. Kyoskuro, Charoskuro, that word, man, what a tough word to pronounce. But yeah, if you want to hear me mispronounce it in one of my other videos, then go watch my videos. So, with that being said, um, yeah, as I already mentioned, my channel is more of... Oh, actually, I haven't mentioned it, um, but I need to mention it. Uh, my goal for this channel really is kind of like a supplementary educational channel. There's plenty of art channels out there already that are very, very good with step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, um, channels that come to my mind is Control Paint by Matt Core, Very, very awesome um, instructional videos. And Marco Gucci, uh, who has 10 Minute to Better Painting series in his uh, channel. So those are really good channels, really good art educational channels. And then of course there's other of uh, there's tons of other channels that are step-by-step -step instructional channels. You can just check my subscription list. There's tons of them. Um, as for me, I am not planning on doing any of those. <laughs> like I said, I would prefer to spend majority of my free time hanging out with my nephews and doing artwork. I mean, uh, those are like my two priorities, essentially, is just, you know, to do artwork and just, you know, have fun hanging out with my nephews. Um, but yeah, um, so whether or not I will do instructional step-by-step -step videos, I don't, don't know, probably not. Whether I keep up the commentary videos, uh, I would like to do so. Um, 
but yeah, it's all dependent on time. So yeah, now that I have all of that announcements done, um, I guess we can go back and talk about the video uh, and what's going on right now. And um, like I said earlier, you know, um, I was going to go through an outline process to just kind of outline the bunny and that's pretty much where we're at right now where I'm just kind of just drawing the general uh, look of the bunny where the eyes are gonna go where the nose is gonna go where the ears are gonna go and um, so yeah uh, now when I first started uh, doing the bunny I, I really had no intention of making it robotic at all um, I've been doing a lot of robot sketches in my sketchbook. It's just something that I've been fascinated with. So I, I guess you can say that it's been my motif lately, my subject matter that I'm kind of studying. Um, but I'm not really bound by it by any means. Uh, if a prompt calls for me to draw a non-robotic thing, then I will draw a non-robotic image, essentially. And when I first ran across the prompt, the bunny that never said no, my original intention was just to draw just a regular bunny. But it ended up that, you know, I found some interesting shapes that made it look robotic. Uh, when I did my noise part or my random noise uh, making part, and when I saw like, you know, this really funky looking mechanical shapes, I decided to just take advantage of it and just turn the whole bunny into a robot, essentially. Which is kind of what's going on right now. So yeah. Um, to talk some more in detail about the whole making noise thing. Um, at the very beginning of my art process, I typically just put down just noise which is what I've been calling it which is essentially just you know random shapes random colors and the reason why I just do that instead of you know just doing a general outline sketch like most people would do um, the reason why I do the whole noise thing is just to kind of freshen myself up and just to um, not be so dependent on an idea in my head. Uh, it's a much more looser approach to art making. Um, is I guess what I'm trying to get at. Uh, and since I didn't really have a definitive idea on what to draw and what to paint when it first came into the palm, um, that's why I decided to do this illustration with that kind of approach, you know, where it's much more loose, it's much more, you know, noisy in a way to begin with instead of just starting out with a sketch um but yeah it's a totally different technique that you know I, I wasn't really used to at first but i started exploring about four or five years ago and i've just been kind of just hammering it out you know um it is by no means like a perfect technique but it's a good technique to use especially if one is just you know brain dead on any ideas you know if you just cannot think of like what to draw or what to paint you know then just start out with some noise um so yeah if you're having like a creative block of some sort just put a bunch of noise on the canvas and then make sense out of that noise um so it's a good way of getting over the creative block essentially so yeah So now I'm pretty much beginning to detail the bunny and just as I've mentioned before detailing is pretty much fairly easy um, after I do the whole noisy part of the painting where I just throw a bunch of shapes and kind of blend everything with the textured blender brush. After that initial part uh, once I start the detailing process it's pretty much you know becomes easy. The workflow just pretty much becomes easy because 
the workflow is pretty much the same and it gets repeated or the workflow becomes repetitive in a way but i, I didn't want to say the word repetitive because it sounds like a negative connotation but it's really not basically when once i start the detailing process what i'm basically doing is i'm defining the edges of where the edges that of where i want the edges to be so like right now you can see me working on the ears for example you know and if i want the edge of the ear to be cleared and i just go define it define the edges essentially so that's kind of what i'm doing right now i'm defining the edges um, i also add highlights and I also accent the shadows if the shadows need to be accented. Typically, at this point uh, of the, the detailing process, mainly the detailing process is really more concerned with adding the highlights and defining the edges. Um, and if I have done my shadows correctly, then I wouldn't have to worry so much about the shadows. And this is always good though to just kind of go back and close over some shadow areas, you know, just to kind of add some more details so so yeah here i am working on the face of the bunny uh, some parts are left loose like uh the ears for example I, I didn't define it as much i didn't um want to make it look super realistic in a way um and that's another thing that I like about speed paint and the way I approach my speed paints. It's so loose and it's so sporadic that the noise that I create ends up becoming detail in of themselves. You know, um, a good example of that are the mechanical spiky things that's sticking out of the rabbit's back. Um, you will see me eventually just leave those details alone like I, I pretty much didn't touch it as much because even though it was random noise that I created uh, those, those random noise kind of go along with the whole robotic robot bunny team you know it just works so well that I just kind of just kept it as is so yeah So you pretty much just watch me or see me just go add some highlights to that back part. You don't really see me do much of anything else aside from that. Here I am uh, defining edges again and accenting the shadows. Defining the robot look somewhere. And this is all pretty much just rinse and repeat. So yeah, rinse, repeat, define edges, add highlights, accent the shadows. I love the whiskers part. I think me adding those highlights um, to accentuate the whiskers kind of adds a little more character to the bunny.
And so this illustration is about to be close to being finished. Or this speed paint, um, not so much. This isn't so much as an illustration, but a speed paint. But yeah, there it is. It's done. Uh, thank you guys for watching and hope to see you in the next video. Good night.